This week, we're flying you across the globe to Australia for full coverage of the third Hobie Fishing World Championship presented by Daiwa. 46 competitors from 17 countries will battle it out for the world champion title in the most prestigious event of kayak fishing. Welcome to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Each week, we'll take the Hobies and peruse the country in search of adventure, fun, and fish. Whether we're drifting a stream, dissecting a lake, or covering an ocean, we'll show you the tips and tactics to make your next trip successful. Come with us, set your sail, and discover what life in a Hobie is all about. Stay tuned for Hobie Outdoor Adventures. We're in Bem River, Victoria, Australia for the third Hobie Fishing World Championship presented by Daiwa. Since 2011, the event has grown rapidly from five to 17 countries with 46 anglers around the world. I'm very humbled that I won the first one. Uh, it's a great group of guys, great fishermen, and so the excitement is, is ongoing. It's, um, the lead up to it is you have to kind of keep your emotions intact because you're either not going to sleep through the excitement of it all, and I'm easily excited as my mates know, so. I'm just like, oh awesome event, all the people that are here to see and get an opportunity like this to fish with some of the best and, and a nice fishery like this. Awesome. I'm just hoping to hook up and get me one of these Australian crackers. My first time in saltwater. I'm strictly a freshwater fisherman. Uh, but, but again, I, I only started fishing five years ago, so I, everything is, a, is an experience and adventure. Uh, never touched a brim, no, never seen one. I'm expecting to get busted up a bit, um, struggle a little. Um, I, I really don't know what to expect. Oh, it's a blast. It's, uh, it's incredible just to see how they, the show they put on and to be down here with all these fishermen from all over the country and everybody's, uh, they just can't be any nicer. They're just super nice people and, and it's a great day. Can't wait to get out there, man. Just get that first uh, brim on the water and uh, get him into the boat. Can't wait. Pretty pumped. The excitement uh, for me as a tournament uh, director is having anglers from across the world come to a little part of our country which is very special to us and the opportunity to display that to international anglers is uh, it's very exciting. The 2012 Hobie Fishing World Championship was a big success and after trophy bass fishing in Lake Bastrop and Fayette County Reservoir, Austin, Texas, Marty Mood of United States took the trophy, big prize package, and automatic entry to the 2013 championship. Uh, <laughs> uh, I tell you, the excitement is off the charts this morning. Uh, every time you come and see all these boats lined up like it is, it's, it's like a little kid at Christmas. Uh, I was out here dancing around this morning, going crazy. Uh, you know, the adrenaline's up high. I can't wait to get on the water. It's gonna be a lot of fun. This year, we're back in Australia, and the international competitors will, once again, face the challenge of saltwater bream quest, but in new locations in the East Gippsland, Victoria. The 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship presented by Daiwa is held on two beautiful fisheries. The first day of the tournament will be at Bem River on the shore of Sydenham Inlet, 441 kilometers east of Melbourne. Bem River is unique in its position, one of Victoria's best bream fishing spots and is quickly gaining a reputation as a prime destination for flathead. Day two and day three is held at Marlow, a village where the mouth of the snowy river meets the sea. It's also known for one of the best bream fisheries in the state of Victoria. The rules of the 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship are simple. Anglers will compete from identically rigged Hobie Mirage Pro Angler 14s. The kayaks are all fitted out with the same equipment, that way it's an even playing field. And we've kind of chosen a lot of neat products on here. One of those is the brand new Lowrance Elite 5 HDI. This sounder is really going to be useful in these two waterways because of the depth of waterways and the grass flats. Another feature of the kayaks that we use, which really make a difference, is the Hobie Mirage Drive. 
to me, without this, you just really can't compete in the kayak competition. It leaves your hands free for fishing, and that really means you're going to put yourself on the fish a lot more. While you're on the water the whole day, it's really important that you have great seating. Hubby have a patented Vantage seat. It's very adjustable, both the lumbar, the back, and, the, and the, where you sit, and it really makes yourself comfortable. In this competition, we're going to have a live weigh-in. So this way, they're going to have the live well made by Hubby Cat, and it's going to hold three fish. Three brim each day will be presented to the Waymaster, and the heaviest bag wins. Last but not least is a must-have item. It's the new Micro Anchor by PowerPole. This device is a shallow water anchor, and it suits these two fisheries very well because the grass flats in here. A simple remote lowers the pole down, holds your position, and it comes back up. This is one of the must-have things there. That's a brief rundown on the kayaks they're using for this competition. This episode of Hobie Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Daiwa, advancing the sport of fishing. Power Pole Micro Anchor, swift, silent, secure, and small. And by Lorenz, find, navigate, dominate with the new HDS Gen 2 Touch. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures. Today is pre-fish day of the 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship presented by Daiwa. Now it's a beautiful morning at Bem River with a fairly mild 50 to 54 degrees Fahrenheit and just a light southwesterly breeze. It'll be a group start, it'll be a time start, so we'll give you a countdown. Um, you don't want to break the line, there could be some very hefty penalties at the bar tonight if you do. PFDs fishing licenses, and you're all good to go that way. The goal today is to learn new techniques and testing the new waters while keeping the atmosphere low key, relaxed, and social. The competitors are paired up in groups with an Australian to mentor the international anglers, getting everyone on the same page and really adding to the fairness of the competition. Uh, Staffman from Sweden and myself are gonna go out with uh, Ron Ronnie Sontars from Australia and he's gonna show us what he knows about catching black brim. I'm going to keep my ears open, mouth shut. Um, some of the, the difficulties these guys are going to find is that um, the fish are very finicky. It's going to be a real finesse bite, so that means they're going to have to do really slow rolling, they're going to have to do a lot of pausing. If they're not doing that pausing and doing that slow rolling, they're going to um, probably miss a lot of bites. Their idea is that they can teach the internationals to catch fish, and if their international team won in the pre-fish days, they actually won a Laurent Sander, so there's a bit of a bonus for both people. Flathead, I think. That flatty? You definitely established there's flatheads around. <laughs> there we go. Something. I think it's another flathead. He's not fighting very much. Yep. Uh, anything's fun on this light line. <laughs> they have some nasty spikes or nasty gill plates or something so uh i'm not gonna touch it that's for sure i'm just gonna get the net get him in the net and then uh go from there i've got some oh son of a gun and that's that it's never fun to lose a fish it's even worse in a tournament not not that today's just a practice day but it's way worse when it's a 20 dollar crankbait <laughs> Oh well. Trying to catch fish, but it's not working at the moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just trying to um, at least find some small fish rather than the flathead we've been getting. And um, I think once they get one or two small fish, then they'll uh, get a bit of confidence and yeah, hopefully something will happen. Yeah, so we came up this way. Um Mostly to get out of the wind, but uh, I saw a lot of the black swans up here, and um, they tend to get in the water there and uh, stick their head down and pull the weeds out. And the black brim tend to follow around and just uh, eat the shells that it pulls out with the weed. The power pole's fantastic. I, I was 
I was a bit unsure on how, how well it would work, but um, it's definitely holding the kayak quite well. Being at your hands where you just push the button and it's down, you don't have to worry about dropping an anchor or uh, putting in a drift chute. Um, it, it's very quick and easy to use. So what do you think, Matt? Should we head out? Might go a bit further to the right. Yeah. We'll give it a shot over there. Yeah. Sure. Oh, thanks to you, mate. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Windy out there, man. Caught some fish, though. Yeah. Kind of. Semi-confident in an area. So we'll see how that goes. Very, very good day. Caught my first fish. While using the uh, power pole, great. Great feature for the PA. Yeah, it's a good one. Nice, thanks. You don't have to guess, because you know. <laughs> you weighed in the biggest fish today. Yeah. Also yeah. means both of you guys are going to take home a Lorraine Sounder. It was amazing, and, and actually the biggest one I caught was the very first one, and it was like within 30 minutes of being there. It just worked out where I got lucky, I guess. He sort of adapted to the uh, conditions, and uh, he, he was using a bait caster reel, which, uh, yeah, we, we were a bit <laughs> dubious about, but no, that's all good. He, he was confident in it, and it was really good. Hobie Outdoor Adventures will be right back with more coverage of the 2013 Hobie Fishing well World Championship presented by Daiwa. Pretty cool. Welcome back to Hobie Outdoor Adventures and the coverage of the third Hobie Fishing World Championship presented by Daiwa. Day one starts off on time with weather conditions similar to yesterday's pre-fish, mainly cloudy with patches of sun coming through. The wind is expected to pick up to 8 to 16 miles per hour from the southwest, making for good conditions to get out and bag some bream early. Well, we fished a couple of spots yesterday that was uh, successful, so I'll try those. Uh, the same spots and uh, haven't been to the other side of the lake but I will try I have a little secret spot that I got recommended so I, I might try that if, uh, if my spots from yesterday doesn't work so yeah that's about my plan oh man it's uh, everybody's pumped up to get out here and chase these brim uh, everybody uh, has been preparing all, all night and all morning today and uh, we're hoping that we can get out there and uh, catch them yesterday we pre on the pre-fish day Every one of our team has fish, and they got their fish back, so I guess it's a good sign. So good luck to all the competitors, and good luck to the Chinese team. Three, two, one, you are underway. Yeah. <laughs> Going a lot better than yesterday. Fish back here is just more pleasant and apparently so far the fish agree with me. A little squidgy juice. Let's see if the bite keeps going. In such small increments that they measure, I'm not used to it. You want to make sure, take, I want to make sure I take care with each one. I think this guy's going to be a little short. Yeah, he's under, kind of hard to hold these little guys, but he's a little undersized. The pre-fish day was really tough. I struggled to find fish and I had to navigate a lot because I haven't, I haven't been to the venue before, haven't even been to Victoria before, so it's, it's a new experience for me. I caught my first black brim last week, so <laughs> I normally fish for yellowfin at home. It's similar to back home uh, when uh, unexpected uh, cold fronts come through and the wind kicks up, uh, fishing can, uh, can get a little tough. But uh, there's some fish back here, and uh, we're going to stay after them hard today. Oh, that's a big one. 
Oh, that's a big one. That is a big, big fish. Or at least what I think is a big fish. I don't know on size, but that's the biggest one today. <laughs> That's a big improvement. <laughs> All right, buddy. We've been uh, hitting this cover up in the river here, and, and I just got my second fish uh, about five minutes ago. So I'm fairly optimistic moving forward through the rest of the day that uh, uh, we can stay up here and, and uh, finish out our limits and uh, maybe uh, better our, our totals. Ah. It's a good one. Oh man, it makes me smile. <laughs> That's exciting. Felt really good. That was a nice fish. Another nice fish. I don't know, I mean this morning it was all, I had them all before the rain, the rain was nasty, I didn't like that. That reminded me of England, no good at all. Very cold, but it's nice now with the sun out. Yeah, the, the events are great, the social side of it is fantastic. Everybody's quite, share, they're sharing their information. The fishing's usually very, very good. Um, and it's nice to catch new species, meet new people, and make new friends. I mean, a lot of friends from Texas last year, still chatting on Facebook, it's great, it's a, it's a lovely feeling. It's a real Hobie family, which you don't get with other teams. More coverage of the 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship when we come back. This episode of Hobie Outdoor Adventures has been brought to you by Ram Mounds, made in the USA, your best connection. Columbia, trying stuff since 1938. And by Hobie Polarized, trusted, quality, heritage. We're in Bem River, Victoria, Australia for the third Hobie Fishing World Championship presented by Daiwa. We chose this part of Australia uh, basically because we have lots of fisheries in close proximity to each other, so it works well using multiple fisheries. You don't have to travel too far, uh, and the reality is some of the best brim fishing that we have in Australia is right here, so you know, it ticked two boxes, it was a, a no-brainer. The other thing that we really thought about was the competitors' experience altogether. It's a very, very small town. Bim River had about 40 locals living there. Very, very quiet little town. It's all about fishing. And uh, I think that's the important part. Day one at the 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship kicked off with heavy cloud cover and a light breeze picking up, adding to the difficulty for anglers unfamiliar with the arena, generating some pretty choppy conditions and making it tough to feel the fish on light lines and lures. The United States' Justin Carter headed for the cover of fallen trees to get a better feel for the bites and started by pitching like he would for bass and said the breams seemed to like it. He went on to pick up three solid one kilo bream to take the lead on day one. I'm not that excited yet. I, uh, I'd like to make sure that I can get three fish the next day and then it might kick in. Then I might be really excited after that. But to come down here in tough conditions, I'm, I'm happy to have done really well. The Australian's Richard Summerton took a different approach. He headed to the entrance for the run-in tide chasing yellowfin bream, 
putting him safely in second place. Oh, I know this place pretty well. Um, it's a little bit lower than what I'm used to though. Um, so I had a couple of other spots that I couldn't get into. I know I've got fish, but uh, I just I found them anyway, so it was good. And coming in very close in third place is Jason Meach from Australia. Just slugged it out in the most choppiest conditions I could find. And um, basically the, the waves generate a fair bit of oxygen in the water, uh, pushes the food there as well. Um, and I knew no one would be sitting in it, so I just went to the roughest place I could find and just kept working it over. Now let's take a look at the top 10 after day one at the 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship, presented by Daiwa. The competition looks set to pick up on day two with very different conditions in Marlow, which is about an hour drive west of the Bem River. There will likely be a much stronger tide, making pedaling tough on the anglers. The weather for Marlow is looking good for day two, but is expected to turn for the last day of competition, keeping things interesting for all involved. Stay tuned, next week on Hobie Outdoor Adventures, we'll continue our coverage of the 2013 Hobie Fishing World Championship, presented by Daiwa.